Well, welcome Mitzi, and welcome everyone else to the very first episode of a brand new show I am starting called I Need to Tell You About. Um, a show where I come on and talk about some obscure movies that I just need to tell you about. Uh, initially, I, like, I knew, I knew I had to make this episode, and I, I was thinking, like, I'm gonna make this episode, this might be the only episode... I've already got something in mind for a second episode, so a second episode is probably in order to, um... Welcome to the pilot. The pilot, at the very least. Yes, this is this is the pilot episode. There will... There will, there will at least be an episode two. I would like to have, like, other people on to talk about obscure movies they want to talk about as well. So, keep, like, a good variety to it. If you expand it to shows, I have a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I, you've got a few movies I, I think are, are worth talking about. Mm. Certainly, uh, you, you have your, your Korean gay baking movie. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember what that's called. Uh, it's called Antique. Antique, okay. Um, definitely talk about that one. It is a weird one. <laughs> uh... Now you 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 may be saying to yourself like Matt you you you're talking about three movies that seems fairly similar to your old show uh movie nights where where but movie nights I was showing movies and then talking about them and usually they were thematically linked somehow it it would be like a triple feature that was you know part of a trilogy or they're all like from the same country, same genre, same director, same, same actor. Um, this is just random. This is just whatever I wanted to talk about. Also, uh, we've moved movie nights to Twitch. So I'm, I'm showing the movies live now. And some of these I think probably will show up for movie night. Although this first one I'm going to talk about, I don't think I can show on Twitch. I think this would probably violate a lot of Twitch's terms of service, so... Is it too I'm spicy? I'm not gonna... T too hot yeah, for TV, too hot for Twitch. This one's too spicy. I, I'm, I'm gonna probably not do this one. The, the first movie I want to talk about today is a film called Final Flesh. Um, from a gentleman named Vernon Chapman. Vernon Chapman... Uh, is the creator of shows like Xavier Renegade Angel and Wonder Chosen, uh, if you've seen those. He was also a producer on South Park. He's, he's written a lot for South Park, I think. I just want to, sorry, I just want to say, if you hear squeaking in the background, that is my dog. I need to keep her next to me at all times. So, <laughs> if she weighs in with squeaks, just, yeah. I, I can cut. Oh, okay. I, I will cu I will cut your audio when you're not talking, so... Oh, okay, cool. Just just talk louder than the squeaks. Creator of Xavier Renegade Angel uh, and Wonder Shows and producer on South Park, in 2009 hired four different custom porn websites to act out a script he had written... It's sort of an absurdist comedy about the end of the world and got got these amateur porn studios to to make it for him like they're like oh yeah send us you know x amount of money and a script and we'll we'll act out your your wildest fantasy uh <laughs> and you watch this movie and you're like Man, these guys really were no questions asked, weren't they? Like, did, did, did they, they had to wonder. They had to be like, what the fuck is this? Because this is not, this is, it, it's, <laughs> it's not fetish material, is the thing. Like, it's, it's so, like, it's, it's not even related to sex. It is so detached from anything sexual. It's like like one of the segments is about like the last happy molecule in the universe. It's like what? The last what does this have to do molecule. with porn? Wait, hold on. Is there any actual? Is there even any like sort of like sex or sexual acts in 
the movie? There is sex. There is not penetrative sex. It is all pretty... Pretty NC-17 level sex. Mm, okay. Um, lots of nudity. Couple blowjobs. Um... That is that is one warning I, I I should give before you get into this movie. It is not safe for work, uh, as perhaps the premise led you to to understand. He did hire porn studios to make these, but um, I I mean, honestly, it wouldn't be that odd if there were like like if you took the sex parts out, like the movie wouldn't seem. I mean, it would probably feel a little less weird, I guess, but it, it wouldn't lose much in terms of, like, story? <laughs> mm -hmm. as, as much as there is a story to this, because it's kind of a disorienting mess, um, and deliberately so. I, I don't say that to insult the film. That is what it is trying to be. It, it's, uh, honestly, if you've seen... Wonder Chosen. It's uh, it's it's honestly a lot like Wonder, Sh like like what Wonder Chosen does for something like Sesame Street. This is doing for porn. I see. <laughs> which is which is a very odd comparison, I guess. But like you can tell, it's written by the same guy who made Wonder Chosen. <laughs> You're like, yep, yeah, this is the exact same sense of humor that Wonder Chosen has. Um, now me personally, I've always preferred Xavier Renegade Angel. I think it's a little more clever, but... I've only watched the show it, once. <laughs> Xavier Renegade Angel? Yeah, I, it was, like, late at night, like, 2 a.m. Uh, the perfect time to watch it, I yeah. think. It, it, it's not just, like, gross-out humor, it's not, like like, aggressive, oh, look, we're so edgy, haha. -ha. There's, like, a degree of absurdism to it there's a degree to uh th th there's a degree of just just weirdness to it that that undefinable quality that is it, it's it's strange it's unexpected i guess it has an element of the unexpected to it um final flesh definitely more so wonder shows in is still trying to be a parody of Sesame Street, where F Final Flesh isn't really a parody of anything specific. It's just, like, here's what we got some amateur porn actors to say, and, and, and my god, you can tell these are amateurs. We're, we're talking, like, people filming out of their own mobile homes <laughs> that made this movie. Um, and I, I honestly wonder if any of them are aware of the movie like now that it's out there because it's it's not like it was a super well-known movie um in fact until very recently you couldn't even the the only way you could watch it was on archive.com that's how i watched it uh i watched it back in april um it was it was the week of 420 it, i don't know if it was 420 specifically but i i committed that week to you know getting high and watching some weird movies and final flesh was one of those movies and i'm like holy shit this is amazing i need a physical copy of it at the time the only way to get it was an out of print dvd from like when it came out but since april uh, the people over at the American Genre Film Archive have put out a Blu-ray of Final Flesh, so you can now get it on Blu-ray, oh, although... Great, you can get it in high definition. <laughs> if if you're not already committed to the idea, uh, it's still free on archive.com, or archive.org, excuse me, archive.org, I, I will put a link to that in the description actually you can watch it for free um side note at the moment uh at the time of recording at least maybe it'll be resolved by the time this comes out uh archive.org is uh, getting sued so uh if you would like to support archive.org they are a wonderful 
organization. They are a wonderful website that is helping preserve art. And copyright is standing in the way, as it always does. Copyright always stands in the way of art preservation. Does it? It bothers me. It bothers me immensely. I would love for you to explain how. Not that I don't believe you, I'm just curious. Well, because it's very easy to maintain an archive of these things until the owner of the things you're archiving shows up and goes, Hey, wait, no, we don't want you to have this. We want to keep this. This mm. is ours. You can't, you can't use it. Mm. Well, Listen, listen, if public libraries hadn't been in existence since, like, ancient Babylonia, ancient Babylon, that's what the name of the country is called, if public libraries hadn't been around forever, you know publishers would fight tooth and nail to make public libraries illegal. Mm. You know, you're cutting into the publisher's profits. You can't do that. Libraries are bad for the author, man. That is untrue. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's it's bullshit, but it's, it's the world we live in. A, a part of me feels like at that point it's their fucking problem. It's like, hey, if you don't want your own damn art to be preserved, fuck you. That's your your issue. Anyways, there's my unsolicited rant about how much I hate copyright law. That was entirely so, solicited. I asked for it. What are you talking about? That's the definition of solicited. Supportarchive.org. Um, in their fight to preserve art. And uh, if you want to support the American Genre Film Archive, a nonprofit organization who is also, you know, very active in preserving films. They've preserved, like, 3,000 films in their archive. Or something. I might even be lowballing that. I have a lot of respect for the American Genre Film Archive. And they, they put out Blu-rays, and I have bought every single one of their Blu-rays, except Bat Pussy, because I don't want a copy of Bat Pussy. I do. Um, Just from the Some name of these alone. are not... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that movie It's a really gross porno And there's Intermittent with scenes of a woman Dressed as Batman Bouncing around on a rubber ball Um, not in a sexual way Just to, like as her mode of transportation <laughs> Um I've bought all of their Blu-ray releases Because they're an organization I I care about immensely. I, I want to support them. And they do really good releases. Not always of movies I care about, but... Flesh for... Uh, uh, Final Flesh, excuse me. Flesh for Frankenstein's a different movie. That's another one worth talking about. I love that movie, too. Um, Final Flesh, definitely one I wanted a Blu-ray of, and I'm very happy American Genre Film Archive provided me with one. My first thought... Or feeling, and maybe we're we're past this point. But my first thought or feeling is when when you said that you can just pay people to act out porn, I can just imagine it's like why aren't people going to them with just like their fan fictions and be like, make a script out of this, do it. <laughs> well, someone's doing that. Someone out there is doing that. If I mean, I I'm sure people are hiring them to reenact their slash fiction. Yes. But, uh, if <laughs> watching Flesh, uh, Final Flesh, you're kind of like, hmm, okay, they're not very good actors. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hire them to act out my fanfic. Your Waluigi fanfic? Yeah, no, not my Waluigi fanfic. Um, well, who would you hire I, to act out your Waluigi fanfic? Out of curiosity, let's get completely derailed here. Let me let me take a second. <laughs> uh, Tilda Swinton as Waluigi. <laughs> I think that's all I have to say about Final Flesh. Just a singularly odd movie. There is nothing like this. <laughs> um, and you know, I I, I feel like. There maybe doesn't need to be more than one of these, but I'm glad it happened once. Wildly fa- and I'm glad- I'm glad it was Vernon Chapman who- who made this, because he can make something weird enough to, like, like, compensate for the fact that it is basically porn. It's like, nah, okay, 
But Vernon Chapman went wild enough with this that no one is going to look at this and be like, yes, this is for, like, erotic purposes. This is a comedy. This is just flat out a comedy. Do not go into this expecting it to be sexy at all. This is a comedy. <sighs> I will say, if you're going to watch it, I, I do recommend doing it uh, not sober. Although... If you can swing it, like, if, 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 if you're okay with seeing something this weird sober, go for it. Anyways, moving on to the second film I wanted to talk about. And this one's a step up in popularity. It, it has quite the cult following, actually. Um, I st Honestly, like, I, I say I want this show to be, like, to be about obscure movies. Obscure is a pretty broad term. It really know? is. Like, uh, the second film I want to talk about is The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Uh, a film with a pretty sizable cult following. Much more well-known than, than Final Flesh, so... You know, uh, obscure can range from something like this, that, like, your everyday man on the street won't know, but that a very specific audience will know, to something like Final Flesh that... Before April, not a lot of people knew about it. I didn't know um, about it until literally just now, so... Uh, that's not true. I've told you about it. I told you about it when I watched it. When? When was this? I have a April. terrible memory, so... <laughs> that's fine. I can tell you the same stories over and over, and you, you, you like them every time. Yep. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> the Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert is an Australian film... About three drag queens who have to venture across the Australian outback to get to a drag performance in a big city on the other side of Australia. Stars uh, Hugo Weaving is the main character. Um, no, well known for his role as uh, Elrond in Lord of the Rings and uh, Agent Smith in the Matrix movies. Joining him is one of my favorite underrated actors, uh, Mr. Terrence Stamp, who is whose character is just a trans woman. <laughs> like, and it's clear he like uh, she she's been doing this like a long time. She she's like an old school drag queen, and it kind of seems like she started in drag and then was like, you know what? I want to, I want to do the woman shtick full time and, you know, tone down, not drag. There's, there's like a clear divide between like her doing drag and her not doing drag. I well, I mean, there's, a, there's like a clear a divide be between being trans and doing drag. You can do yes. both, but they're different things. Yes. yes. Um, uh, and then you've got uh, Guy Pierce, lead character of Memento, if you'll recall that one. He's also fairly prominent in L.A. Confidential. One of the... Well, yeah, yeah, he's like the main character in L.A. Confidential. Um, which is odd, because I don't think either of those three actors, any of those three actors are German. Or are Australian, excuse me. German? Where did German come from? Um... See, it it is a very distinctly Australian movie, but I think they just got three British actors. Well, I, I'm wrong. Hugo Weaving was born in Nigeria. <laughs> uh, that's wasn't expecting that. Um, Guy Pearce, born in the UK. Terence Stamp, also born in the UK. Terrence Stamp, I, I I didn't spend enough time talking about him. He he plays uh, Zod in Superman Two. He's also in The Hit and The Limey. Um, one of my favorite roles. He plays Satan in The Company of Wolves. That might even be a pick for this show. That that one's a little obscure. Uh, most recently, however, he was uh, in Last Night in Soho. He's he's oh, the I old man that. who sort of. Yeah, he's he's the old guy who sort of follows the main character around town, and she thinks he's like uh, she she thinks he's Matt Smith's character, 
And then he isn't Matt Smith's character. Spoilers. <laughs> and in Adventures, Pris- Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, he plays uh, Bridget, who... Bridget? Yes. No. Bernadette. Excuse me. Bernadette. And, uh, yeah, they, they get this big old bus named Priscilla. The bus is named Priscilla, not any of them. <laughs> And they drive this big bus across the Australian outback. And it keeps breaking down, and that causes issues for them. Although they also, uh, they end up meeting a guy out there, played by Bill Hunter. Uh, Nice guy. He helps him out through a lot of the movie. Really interesting movie. Really fascinating exploration of, like, like, the divide between... Like, like, queer culture and, and, like, the rural areas, the, 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 you know, like, the, these places full of, like, the tough guys who live out on, on, in the harsh conditions of the outback. It's it's just, it's just an entertaining, it's just a well-made film all around. It's incredibly well shot. The performances are really good. I suppose... Uh, like, today, people bring up uh, issues with, like, oh, casting, like, cis actors to play trans characters. Um, and I don't know if that's a totally fair criticism. I do think you you probably should hire trans actors just because they're not getting a lot of work. I think if, now... If have... I think, yeah, what I say, I, I think now it's a very valid criticism. I think... With, you know, with how things are now, like, politically, I guess I would say, it's like, it makes more sense. Because it's just like, if you want to have a movie supporting trans people, hire trans actors. They're not hard to find. Yeah, and and that's like kind of where I was going. Uh, the Monster movie High movie, movie is doing better than you at this. Come on! Uh, this movie came out in 94, and I I feel like they had to cast Aaron Stamp in this role. Like, no, no one, no trans actor would have the pull that Terrence Stamp has. Not in 1994. Well, yeah, it's like, that's what I said. It's like, back then, it, it was almost like if you wanted to make a movie about queer people, I guess it made more sense to hire cis and or straight actors because it's like those are the actors that you're going to get to see your movie. Like that that's the pull you're gonna have, right? Like Yeah. And I, I think there's even something positive to be said for it, right? You know yeah. you go see a movie where this actor you really love is playing a sympathetic trans character and it's like, well, okay, maybe trans people aren't that bad. It's it's a way to sort of lure people in, I guess. <laughs> you know, people who might not change their minds otherwise, or, like, not see this movie otherwise. It's like, oh, well, what do I care about it? You know what I mean? Like, which is a shitty thing, but it's, like, a sad truth. It's, like, a thing where it's just, like, yeah, it was kind of necessary back then. Yeah, no, you I You wanted I your am... story to be told at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna cancel the adventures of priscilla the queen of the desert no i'm this. not saying I, you should i'm I, saying the opposite I, <laughs> yeah no I, I i think that was perfectly acceptable casting plus i just liked seeing terrence stamp in movies like fuck it cast cast terrence stamp as everyone cast him as a cis woman cast him as a, a trans man i don't care that's what it's, i want to see just... more of i want to see more cis actors playing cis characters that are not of their gender and i want to see more trans actors being allowed to play cis characters make it happen that's how we, that's how i know we've got equality <laughs> uh see see you would like john waters female troubles would i um <laughs> no <laughs> but uh he, he does ca- he casts uh, divine as a woman in that movie and a man. She plays both a woman and a man in the movie, Mm. um, which uh, leads (laughs) content warning uh, leads to a scene where divine rapes himself. What? (laughs) Uh, I'm sorry. 
And then at the end of the movie, uh, Divine's character is in jail, and uh, she has a prison girlfriend, and the prison girlfriend is a trans woman, was played by a trans woman. Um, it's a very brief role, though. She she has, like, two lines. <laughs> That's wild. It is. John, Wa- John Waters was a wild person. <laughs> I'll show you one of his less... Grow that that one is just hard to sit through, honestly. Like it's it's gross and it gets boring with how gross it is, in my opinion. A lot, a lot to stomach. It, it, yeah, it 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 loses my attention. And I have a very sensitive tummy. Multiple maniacs or desperate living, I think, are you know equally as wild, but not not as boring. Anyways, there's our. John Waters derailment. I think John Waters is a perfectly rational thing to be talking about when you're talking about a movie like Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Um, and although the movie I think you need to talk about, if you're going to talk about this one, there was a an American ripoff of this movie, which feels weird to say because it was not a super popular movie, and I don't know the degree to which the American film was inspired by uh, the, the the previous Australian film. Uh, it's called Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar. Oh, I've seen that one. I love that movie. Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> that's the American version of uh, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Mm. Um... Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes, John Leguizamo. Yeah, I was gonna. I was going to say that that movie sounds like that one. So yeah, well, it came out one year after the Australian movie, and I'm like, is this a ripoff? Are you ripping off a movie that no one went to see? <laughs> Maybe, although that's kind of a move, right? You rip off something no one's ever heard of, and it's like, wow, this is so new and original. That's what Tarantino does. He just rips off movies so obscure no one's heard of them. <laughs> Call up post for Quentin Tarantino. I love Tarantino, though. I'm wearing my Quintinton and Tarantid by Written Directino shirt right now. You wear that shirt a lot. I do. It's because it's at the front of my closet, so. Quentin and Tarantino by Written Directino. What else can you say about the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? Um... Hugo Weaving wears an outfit made entirely of flip-flops. It's like a flip-flop dress with, like, a flip-flop hairband. You sent me that picture, and I was <laughs> enchanted by it. <laughs> and it and is, some, some little flip-flop earrings to match. It is excellent. My grandma owns those earrings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I, I guess with that, we'll move on to... Uh, the final film I wanted to tell you guys about. The final this film. Is a f- <laughs> this is a film from 1970 titled Chariots of the Gods. Ooh. Um, it's based, based on a book by Erich von Dankin. Darnkin? I don't know how to pronounce that. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. It's a documentary, and... It's a documentary about the idea of what if every religion, what if all of the religions in the world, all the stories of gods and monsters and heroes, what if every single one of them was true, but they were all about aliens, actually? Um, that's the crux of the movie. And that's 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 the whole movie. Like, every every scene, it's like, okay, here's... This god from this region of the world, and here's the stories about them. And, like, what if they were actually talking about aliens? So it's Scientology. Doesn't that sound like an alien? It's Ancient Aliens, the movie, Uh. right? Uh, Because that's the thing. Uh, The book this movie is based on is what would inspire the stuff Ancient Aliens does now. So this is sort of the precursor to Ancient Aliens. And I gotta say, like... This is a movie, this movie is perfect for people who find the concept of ancient aliens funny, but are exhausted with the fact that there's, like, 30 seasons of it. (laughs) 
Because they're just repeating themselves. They're just saying the same shit over and over and over. Even this movie. This movie is repetitive as hell and it's only an hour and a half. But here it is, <laughs> like, it's condensed, abridged. So, uh, yeah, if, if, if you like Ancient Aliens but you want a more digestible version of it, just watch Chariot of the Gods from 1970. You want it Ancient is... Aliens canned, condensed, hydraulic pressed? Yeah, yeah, this is like... This is the thing we should be pointing and laughing at. Ancient Aliens is, like, way too much to deal with. Uh, Chariot of the Gods is, you know, the truncated version. And it, it was the original, right? Yeah. They they were doing this in the 70s. Uh, and honestly, it, it feels a lot funnier in the 70s. Because, <laughs> like, like, the 70s, I think of, like, the 60s and 70s. And I think of, like, UFO culture and all the... Yeah. The weird space stuff that was going on. I was about to say it also feels like the 70s condensed. You want to know something wild? Yeah. This movie was nominated for an Oscar. It was nominated for Best Documentary Feature. That is amazing. <laughs> That's fabulous. I mean, there is arguably educational content to it because it is like exploring all these ancient myths. Yeah. But... It's exploring all of these ancient myths so that it can turn around and go, what if it was aliens? I mean, that feels more like a, like, historical fiction. <laughs> like, it's like, here we took this true yeah, concept yeah. about, you know, histories and myths and ideas and we put our own little fun little spin on it. Hey! Yeah, but, uh, like, that's, that's what this is. It's historical fiction because it's not like they ever present any evidence no. That these these things were done by aliens. It was. It's just kind of like, yo, what if? <laughs> you know, it's, it's 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 like stoner mentality that stuff. I was it's about like, to say it's your stoner roommate just saying like, hey man, wouldn't it be crazy if? <laughs> right. That's that's all. It never goes beyond like, what if they were actually aliens? <laughs> I. It's also. I mean. For one thing, it is taking all of these stories hyper-literally. It's mm -hmm. like, yes, this actually literally happened in the real world. This wasn't like, this wasn't a hallucination. This wasn't something poetic. This wasn't, uh, you know, something they saw in like a dream or something. This was all real. It really happened. So, um, whose perspective is this movie from? Uh, an uncommitted third-person narrator? Because I could say you could make a really good movie, like a funny and interesting actual movie for one hour and 30 minutes that's from the perspective of the aliens. Like, it's the perspective <laughs> of the aliens all plotting <laughs> these different events that they're going to do on Earth. It's just like, hey, how are we going to fuck with them today, Jerry? Well, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe I'll dress up. Um, I'll, I'll grow some hair, like some really long hair, and maybe I'll pretend to die for like three days, uh, come back, I'll, I'll make some blind guys see, maybe do that, uh, we'll workshop it, Jerry, we'll workshop it. Um, anything else? <laughs> you know, something like that, where it's just like, it's just the, from the, from the perspective of aliens fucking with humans. <laughs> It's just like every religion, every mythology, and it's just like, hey man, what are you doing today? It's like, I think I'm going to shoot some lightning bolts at him for a little bit. Maybe do that? <laughs> yeah. Now, the weirdest thing about this movie to me is, uh, like, there's, there's an alternate history hub video where he talks about ancient aliens, uh, which is actually how I first heard of the film, admittedly, um... And in that video, he tries to claim that, like, this is a religion. And I'm going to lightly disagree with that, because this is 100% lore. It lacks any of the ideals that a religion would have, because they, they don't really talk about the implications <laughs> of all of these ancient gods being aliens. They're just like, what if it was aliens? And it's like, okay... Uh, should should we worship the aliens? Are we supposed to worship the aliens? Or is your point like, oh, we've evolved to the point that we're like, like we can finally meet the aliens, like on on their own terms? Go go we can, further. We can stop seeing go, them as gods. 
Yeah, take it take it a step further. Like what else? What else? Give us more. <laughs> yeah, like okay, okay. Let's accept your absolutely batshit hypothetical. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. You're going nowhere <laughs> with this, babe. Give me something. <laughs> You have provided no evidence that this is the case, and now you are not telling me anything about the implications of this. All you're saying is, what if? (laughs) That that is where ancient astronaut theory begins and ends. What if there were aliens? It's like, okay, cool, what do we do about it then? Yeah, we're, we're not worshipping the aliens, we're not building technology to go meet the aliens... You know, this is not, uh, uh, oh, what was that cult called? The, the Gates of Heaven or something? Children of Heaven, I think? Children of Heaven, where they, like, they all took poison so they could go up onto the, the UFO together. It's not that. It's it's just, you know, it's like I said, it's it's stoner mentality. It's like, bro, wouldn't it be wild if it was just up. aliens? Wouldn't be fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that that's the totality of it, but I think it's a it's a very funny, entertaining <laughs> documentary. You know, Cause it's like because yeah, that's that's what it is. That's all it is. But it's it's funny to watch that unfold. It's yeah. funny to see all the directions they go with that. What is what is the because you said they don't provide any sort of like evidence. What are their what is their like main thesis to explain the aliens like. What is their main, like, what do they, uh, here's my question, what, what do they change about it? Do they just be, do they just show you a picture of some, like, mythological god or religious figure and be like, oh, it's green now? <laughs> well, they, they, there is a lot of really nice footage in this film. They went to all these, like, ancient historical sites, and, and, so there's, like, you know, uh, ancient Aztec pyramids, and and they go to like Stonehenge and the pyramids. They they go to like Jerusalem and all that. Uh, so there's actually a lot of really nice footage of these places, and you know they'll they'll show like images, like paintings, depictions of these uh, ancient gods, and and the, and then the voiceover is like, look at that. Doesn't it look like a rocket? <laughs> listen to this doesn't that sound like uh, some sort of communication device and it's like well i mean yeah i i guess honestly at some point i i kind of i kind of have to go what what what's the difference to you what is the difference between an alien and a god to you right i i suppose an alien is a, a tad more like in our own universe but I don't know if there if there were gods, they would be alien to us. They don't live here on Earth, so like it seems like a, like they're just kind of splitting a hair here. It's like, well, you called this a god. I I want to call it an alien, and it's like, all right, fine, man, call it an alien. That doesn't that w- what does that change? Yeah, I'm trying to trying to piece it together. And so they just show you stuff and be like, that kind of looks like an alien thing, right? Yes. Mm. Yes. This sort of this sort of has the energy. I'm I'm getting vibes of this that are like this sort of quote unquote documentary. There's a lot of quotes here, like I think like ten in between. Um that me and my friend picked up from a thrift store because we tend to just pick up random DVDs blindly from like thrift stores and dollar stores and be like, let's watch this. Um and one of them when we picked up was called The Secret. And it was basically oh. just a bunch of people going like, hey, just think positively and all of a sudden everything good will happen to you all the time forever. Like, <laughs> that's... I'm, I'm familiar with the secret, yes. I am I am glad you are, because <laughs> I, I didn't think you would be. Because it's, like, it's that, that's it. That's, that's what it is for, like, an hour. And I'm like, this isn't as fun as I thought it was going to be. We'll see... Where that one's messing up is it's making a positive claim. Yeah. Uh, Chariot of the Gods sort of resists making positive claims. It doesn't make any you know. claim except for what if. Yes. It makes zero claims. I mean, it makes claims about, like, 
ancient mythology, it's like, yeah, ancient mythology tells us about this. Um, and as far as I'm aware, all of that is accurate. Although, you know, we, we have no idea the degree to which we misinterpret the past. So I'm sure some of it, while it is, is accurate to the best of our knowledge, but not necessarily true. All right. Uh, <laughs> any, any, any more thoughts, opinions, comments about Chariots of the Gods? I have no more. All right. Um, that, I think, is a pretty nice cross-section there. We got one super obscure thing, one thing with a cult following, and then one thing uh, that was that I'm not enjoying for the reasons I'm supposed to enjoy it, but I, I very much enjoy it. Any more thoughts, comments, opinions? Anything else you want to discuss? Uh, before the end of this first episode? I wish I did, but no. I No thoughts, head empty. <laughs> Alright. Um, this is a series I'm just gonna do whenever I feel like it. And I mean, I suppose that's true of most of the series on my channel, but this one especially, it's, it's like, like other stuff I have to plan for. This one I'm just gonna be like, okay, you know what, uh, I've got three movies I want to talk about. Just find a time that I can record with someone. Um, I don't think I'm... You're not going to be in every episode. Probably not. You will certainly be in more episodes. I deserve to be. You seemed like a natural choice for, like, the first episode. It's because I'm great. It's because I like talking to you. Aw. Um... All right, well, I, I, I guess we'll call that a wrap on the first episode of I Need to Tell You About... Three movies for you to go check out. Final Flesh, uh, a movie shot by amateur porn makers. Uh, the Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, a story of three drag queens traveling across Australia. And Chariots of the Gods, a documentary that asks the question, what if all of the gods were aliens? Uh, until next time, I'm Matt Presents. And I'm Mitzi. <laughs> and this is Mitzi. Mitzi, do you have anything you want to plug? Absolutely not. All right. In that case, have a nice day.